Now, let's draw our reference lines. We have two reference lines first, and then we have our second. Very good. Now, at reasonable spaces, look at it very carefully. The last time we talked about the height being six and the base being four centimeters. Now, you take your rule and then you measure your four. Now, because it is a circle, the diameter is 4, but the radius is what? 2. Very good. Now, here is the 2. You place it at a reasonable point, and then you draw your circle faintly. You see it? Very good. Now, draw your faint line through it. And then with the help of your 3060 square through the point of intersection, draw it up faintly. Very good. Now, with the same radius, stand at one edge how to Construct a hexagon. You strike an arc at the top here, then you strike one also there. Now, likewise to the opposite side, you strike one here, and then you strike one there. Now, a hexagon is a six sided polygon. You know that with the polygons, we have the pentagon, which is five side, and then we have the hexagon, which is six. We have heptagon, which is seven. We have octagon, which is eight sides. And then we have nonagon. We have decagon, and so on and so forth. So today we're talking about the hexagon. The hexagon. Now, see, I'm joining all these points between the arc and then the edges to get a very correct hexagon. Now look at it very carefully. You see that now you have it nicely done with the circle very faint. Please remember that. Now from there you projected the edges to the top also faintly. One, look at it. Two, three, and four. Now, when you do it correctly, you will see that the base will still be what? Four, as you use for the diameter. So now let's measure our six. So we have our one, two, three, four, five, six. Because I started from two, that is why you have it at seven. Now, with the help of this, the T square, you draw your line to pass through it. Do you see that? Very, very nice. What do you have to do now? You deepen the dimensional lines.
Very good. You see that? You now have your front view or the front elevation and then you also have your plan. Very good. Nicely drawn. The last time we talked about the projections. I said that every time the development is carried from the what? The plan. Now, let's calibrate them. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, you draw another vertical reference line over there nicely. Let's move on. Now, since the development is carried from the plan, we take one side like this. You see it? Very good. It's the same as the diameter. And then, you go. We have our one. Let it be on the line. Let it be on the line. Very good. We have our two. We have our three. We have our four. We have our five. And then we have our six. Nicely. Very good. You can use a divider if you prefer. Because the other dividers are used for stepping up distance, which is the correct uh, tool to be used. So let's count the space. We have one, two, three, four, five, and what? Six. So, with the help of the set square and the T square, look at it. One, it goes up. Join them to the top. To ensure precision, you always make sure that the set square sits on the T square very nicely. Very good. I hope you are doing well. Yes. I bet for me to do. Now, we have our one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's do. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and what? One. Because we know that since we, we divided the one portion, that it means that the one has to work. Two. So we did, let's do, uh, let's dip in our outlines. Very good. We have one, goes up and comes down. Nicely, please, to ensure precision. Now the last one. Very good. So, is that we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Nicely drawn. Now remember, the internal portion of the front view, you have to deepen that one also. Why? Because a hexagon has steep sides. So, you have to deepen that one. Yes. Look at this very carefully. Like we've not deepened the metal part. Why? Because it's not part of it. We just projected that line because of the center of the circle that we use to create the, uh, the, the hexagon. So let's write here surface development of a hexagonal prism prism that you underline it very nicely voila do practice it at home all right that is all